All right, thanks for that, Philip. Now, it's based on the African Choir's first tour to Victoria, England in 1981 and comprises five songs recreated by the composers from an original 19th century concert program. That's a contemporary multimedia installation titled The African Choir 1891 Reimagined, opening at the Apartheid Museum next week. Members of the choir included Charlotte McLeke, her sister Katie Makanya, and Paul Kliniwe, who later became leading social activists and reformers in South Africa. Now, the installation features five recreated songs by the composers Philip Miller and Tutuga Sibisi, who joins us now from our Seapoint Studios to tell us more about the exhibition. A very good morning to you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Now, uh, give us a brief breakdown, in, if you can, into what the African Choir 1891 reimagined and, uh, you know, what the contemporary multimedia installation is about. Morning, and thanks for having me this morning. The exhibition is... As you mentioned, a sound installation um, and image, uh, an image, sound and image installation uh, based on the 1891 choir. And this we took from the original program that they performed when they were in London. Uh, and what we did with the music essentially is we sort of thought about what would it sound like today if what they were singing for the audi English audience, the Victorian English audiences then, was to sound like today. Um, and this was sort of visited with sort of 15 South African singers that we found here in Cape Town two years ago that we worked with in studio. And we used sort of varying sort of choral techniques. And one of them was sort of based largely on improvisation um, and the act of sort of taking apart what was already, what was already created. So, for example, look at the Rossini that we'd sort of found, the Cuyus Anima, which was performed as an operatic aria, which is a part of their first uh, program. Uh, first half of their program, we then sort of imagine taking uh, Rossini and putting him in the middle of Sophia Town and saying, dance, you know, um, where we really sort of pulled apart what was classically, the classical structure of it and put it and introduced sort of elements of Quella and, uh, and Sophia Town jive in it. There was another example for uh, God Save the Queen, which all the singers had to perform for the Queen at the time, Queen Victoria, um, at the end of their program. So what we did with it is we used a Scandinavian improv improvisation technique where uh, each singer is then sort of given an opportunity to take one line. And what they do with that line is up to them by pulling it apart, either singing it slower or putting it together and singing it really quickly. Uh, so we played around with sound, and this is largely based on what happens in the room with the 15 singers that we'd found here in South Africa. And uh, what came out of it essentially is what you'd hear at the exhibition. Indeed. Now, Tutuga, uh, the exhibition is based on the African choir's first tour to Victoria in England in 1981. Tell us more about this choir, which had singers such as uh, Charlotte McLeiker and her sister Katie Makanya and Paul Kliniwe. Well, what's interesting about it, South Africa does have a very sort of long tradition of choral singing. Um, and this is largely based because of the mission schools. And so the singers comprised of seven male and seven female and two boys. And they were all put together from the Eastern Cape, from various mission schools and choirs around um, so, uh, the Eastern Cape at the time. Um, yeah, and so... All right, uh, how did the tour come about then? And uh, the, the choir, the sing how, how did the audience in England well, respond the to thing, their music? The, well, this is the thing. The choir was sort of put together to raise funds for a technical college once they got there. But initially, that was the initial goal. So once they, they got there, essentially, things didn't quite pan out as planned. Um, financially, things did fall apart. And the two men that were sort of in charge of them, which were sort of South Africans who'd left to go to England and then come back to sort of take the singers with them, ended up sort of taking the money with them. So it ended up quite badly for everybody. Um, but whilst there, what was interesting is that you had Katie and, and Charlotte and her sister were quite involved in what was happening in England at the time, which is the suffragettes movement. So. By the time they sort of came back, they became strong activists in South Africa and were part of the reformation towards uh, essentially, you know, democracy that we have today. Yeah, and uh, do tell us more about the songs that you and Philip Miller recreated for the exhibition and what sort of challenges came with this task? 
I mean, beyond sort of like the basic funding challenges when it comes to a project this big. And we've been working on it for the past three years. But it's, I wouldn't say that we had a lot of challenges because the experience is essentially quite a liberating one. I mean, myself coming from a choral tradition as well, um, as a boy at the Dragons Boys Choir School, it was quite interesting to match and see how the program is still quite the same, where in 1891, the original choir, they sang the first half was Western classical music and the second half was African traditional music. And at my school at Drakensberg, we still lay to the same formula. So it's quite interesting that that practice is something that was in me as a child and now as a grown, a grown up and an artist to sort of go back into that. It was quite an exercising, uh, an interesting and exciting exercise really. Um, so I wouldn't say we had a lot of problems. What I would say it was finding singers that could really take on the characters of the original 15 singers okay. was quite an uphill struggle for us, but um, a joyous one more than sort of anything else really. All right, Tutuga, thank you so much for chatting to us this morning. All right, that's a composer, musical director and conductor Tutuga Sbisa speaking to us about a contemporary multimedia installation based on the African Choir's first tour to Victoria in England in 1981 titled The African Choir 1891 Reimagined, opening at the Apartheid Museum next week.